Chapter 21. I Settle My Tab. After Ares disappeared, things changed quickly. News reporters came up to question us. They started asking us strange questions. How did that man kidnap you? Were you scared? I realized they were talking about Ares. Just like Chiron once told me, the humans had tricked themselves into believing a different story from the truth. They believed Ares had kidnapped us and taken us all the way across the United States. The news story was, Percy Jackson and the other two teenagers weren't criminals like everyone had thought. The fight on the bus in New Jersey was Percy trying to get away from his kidnapper. Kidnapper had also caused the explosion in the St. Louis Arch. A waitress in Denver had seen the kidnapper with the three kids in her diner. Finally, brave Percy Jackson had stolen a gun from the kidnapper in Los Angeles and battled him on the beach in Santa Monica. When police arrived, the kidnapper ran away. Percy Jackson and his two friends were now safe with police. The police and reporters passed around a hat and raised money for three tickets to put us on the next plane to New York City. There was no choice but to fly. I figured Zeus would let us get to New York City without knocking us out of the sky, since we had his master bolt. Skipping the play part. When I inserted the card into the elevator slot, a new button appeared, a red one that said 600. I pressed it and waited as the elevator went up and up and up. Finally, ding, the doors slid open. I stepped out and almost had a heart attack. I was standing on a narrow stone walkway in the middle of the air. Below me was Manhattan from the height of an airplane. In front of me, white marble steps led around a cloud into the sky. From the top of the clouds rose a mountain. It was an ancient Greek city, except it was new and clean and colorful the way the city of Athens must have looked 2,500 years ago. I climbed the main road toward the big palace at the peak. In my walk to the top, nobody seemed worried about a war. In fact, everybody seemed happy and festive. Several of them turned to watch me. The palace of the gods was just like Hades's palace in the underworld, except instead of black and bronze, Everything glittered, white and silver. I realized Hades must have built his palace to feel like he was in Olympus. He wasn't welcome in Olympus, except on the winter solstice. I felt a little sorry for the guy. To be banished from this place seemed really unfair. I walked up the palace steps into the throne room. Twelve thrones were arranged in a U-shape. An enormous fire crackled in the center. The thrones were empty, except for two at the end. Zeus, the lord of the gods, wore a dark blue pinstriped suit. He had a gray and black beard like a storm cloud. His face was proud and handsome and grim, his eyes rainy gray. As I got nearer to him, the air crackled with lightning. Poseidon was dressed very differently. He wore leather sandals, shorts, and a beach shirt with coconuts and parrots all over it. His skin was deeply tanned, and his hair was black like mine. His eyes were sea green, also like mine, and were surrounded by sun crinkles that told me he smiled a lot. His throne held a bronze trident, flickering with green light around the tips. The gods weren't moving or speaking but there was tension in the air, as if they'd just finished an argument. I approached Poseidon's throne. I dared not look up. My heart was racing. If I said the wrong thing, I had no doubt they could blast me into dust. Skipping the next play part. Fifteen minutes later, I caught a taxi to my mom's apartment, rang the doorbell, and there she was. My beautiful mother, smelling of peppermint and licorice, the worry leaving her face as soon as she saw me. Percy, she cried. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, my baby. She crushed the air right out of me. 
We stood in the hallway as she cried and ran her hands through my hair. I'll admit it, my eyes were a little misty too. I was shaking, I was so relieved to see her. She told me she had just appeared at the, part, at the apartment that morning, scaring Gabe half out of his wits. She didn't remember anything since the Minotaur, and couldn't believe it when Gabe told her I was a wanted criminal. Gabe had forced her to go into work to make up for lost time and money, so she hadn't seen the news about me coming home. I swallowed back my anger at Gabe and told her my own story. I tried to make it sound less scary. I was get just getting to the fight with Ares when Gabe's voice yelled, Hey, Sally, that meatloaf done yet or what? She closed her eyes. He isn't going to be happy to see you, Percy. Just don't make him angrier, all right? Gabe and three of his big goony friends were playing poker at the table. In the month I'd been gone, the apartment had filled with beer cans, dirty socks and underwear, and other garbage. When Gabe saw me, his face got redder than lava. You got nerve coming here, you little punk. Bad enough I had to give back your mom's life insurance money, he growled. Get me the phone, Sally. I'll call the cops. I can still press charges against him for ruining my car. Gabe, no, my mother said. He raised his eyebrows. Did you just say no? He raised his hand, and my mother flinched. For the first time, I realized something. Gabe had hit my mother. I didn't know when or how much, but I was sure he'd done it. Maybe it had been going on for years, when I wasn't around. My chest filled with anger, and, came, and I came toward Gabe, he just laughed. You touch me and you are going to jail forever. You understand? I'll give you five minutes to get your stuff and leave. After that, I call the police. My mother took my arm. Please, Percy, come to your room. My room was full of Gabe's junk. Gabe is just upset, honey, my mother told me. I'll talk to him later. I'm sure it will work out. Mom, it'll never work out. Not as long as Gabe's here. She lowered her eyes. I'm trying to make a change in my life, Percy. I just need some time. A package appeared on my bed. It looked familiar. The address on it was in my own handwriting. The Gods, Mount Olympus, 600th floor, Empire State Building, New York, New York. With best wishes, Percy Jackson. Over the top in black marker, in a man's clear, bold print, was the address of our apartment and the words, return to sender. Suddenly, I understood what Poseidon had told me on Olympus. You must make an important choice with that package. Whatever else you do, know that you are mine. You are a true son of the sea god. I looked at my mother. Mom, do you want Gabe gone? That jerk has been hitting you. Do you want him gone or not? She hesitated, then nodded. Yes, Percy, I do, and I'm trying to get my courage to tell him. But you can't do this for me. You can't solve my problems. I looked at the box. I could solve her problem. I wanted to slice that package open, plop it on the poker table, and take out what was inside. I could start my very own statue garden right there in the living room. That's what a Greek hero would do in the stories, I thought. That's what Gabe deserves. But a hero's story always ended in tragedy. Poseidon had told me that. I remembered the underworld. I thought about Gabe's spirit drifting forever in the fields of Asphodel, or condemned to torture behind the barbed wire of the fields of punishment. Did I have the right to send someone there? Even Gabe? One look inside this box and he'll never bother you again, I said. She glanced at the package and seemed to understand. No, Percy, she said, stepping away. You can't. Poseidon called you a queen, I told her. He said he hadn't met a woman like you in a thousand years. You deserve better than this, Mom. You should go to college. Get your degree. You can write your novel. Meet a nice guy, maybe? Live in a nice house? You don't need to protect me anymore by staying with Gabe. Let me get rid of him. She wiped a tear off her cheek. 
You sound so much like your father, she said. He offered to build me a palace at the bottom of the sea. He thought he could solve all my problems with a wave of his hand. What's wrong with that? Her multicolored eyes seemed to search inside me. I think you know, Percy. If my life is going to mean anything, I have to live it myself. I can't let a god take care of me or my son. I have to find the courage on my own. Your quest has reminded me of that. We listened to the sound of swearing from the living room. I'll leave the box, I said. If Gabe threatens you, use it. She looked pale, but she nodded. Where will you go, Percy? Half-Blood Hill. For the summer or forever? I guess that depends on what you do about Gabe. I can't live here while he is here. She kissed my forehead. You'll be a hero, Percy. You'll be the greatest of all. I took one last look around my bedroom. I had a feeling I'd never see it again. Then I walked with my mother to the front door. I was leaving here without saving her. Hey, Sally, Gabe yelled. What about that meatloaf, huh? A steely look of anger flared in my mother's eyes, and I thought just maybe I was leaving her in good hands after all. Her own. The meatloaf is coming right up, dear, she told Gabe. Meatloaf surprise. She looked at me and winked. The last thing I saw as the door swung closed was my mother staring at Gabe as if she were imagining how he would look as a garden statue.